said, are you yet holding on? Are you yet living for Christ? And the, the, the floor could have swallowed me. I felt as if God had given this man the book. And this man was looking deep inside the crevices of my soul. And he could see the mess that was going on in my life. And the challenge is that, that so many times the saints of the most high God are like the Philistines. We've got his presence. But we don't know how to use it. That we are in his presence, but we, we, we are stumbling and falling because... The blessing is available, but we don't want to do right so that we can receive the blessing. You see, before Israel would go to any battle, they would consult the presence of God. But King David and King Solomon were entrusted with the ark, and Solomon built a temple just for the presence of God, which ushered in the church area. That it was lost to the Babylonians. And to this day, we don't know where the Ark of the Covenant is right now. But in short, what I'm trying to get you to see on this Sunday morning is that we can't play with sacred stuff. Now, I know you believe sacred stuff is the altar, but, but there's a reason why we call it sacred hymns. Because when you sing the songs of Zion, Something happens inside of you that, that, that if you ever come to church and decide to worship, something miraculous will happen to you. Now, maybe I need to describe what sacred means. And so in my limited knowledge, I want to talk that, that sacred is considered worthy of spiritual respect. Or devotion. It's worthy of awe, yeah. of bowing down, of being consumed in its presence. It ought to be reverenced. It ought to be something that when you see God show up, there ought to be a sense of unworthiness. And I remember growing up that I would see people walk in the door of the church. And before they chew bubble gum, they were, in fact, my silver saint, Sister Ferguson, 90 plus years old, sometimes needs a hand to get in the door. But she won't let you usher her to a seat until she bows down. And let God know he's worthy to be praised. I remember men that would walk past the church. I don't know how you sober up so quickly that no matter how drunk they were. And when they got to the house of the Lord, they would take their hat off and walk straight. And then when they passed the church, Staggerlee would take over. There was something about the awe and reverence. For the things of God. Now you can write up on the church. Now you can destroy the bathrooms in the church. Now you can stick bubble gum under the seats. Now you can come and do all sorts of things in the presence of God. Something has happened to the sacred space. Something has happened to our awe with God. So here's what I want to leave with you today. I believe without a shadow of a doubt, I want to declare that I believe the Bahamas has been disconnected from God. And whether it's an individual or a country, we've stopped inquiring of God. That we've reached the place where we want to do whatever seems right in our own answer. That, that this text, this instant shows that the, the, the moment, and, and I hear people calling for revival in the land, and I preached on Friday, there's a prescribed methodology for revival, 
And surprisingly, I got to teach on it. Joel said the king got to call for it. The governments got to bow down and realize they need God's intervention. It's going to be all right. I'm not preaching to FNM, PLP, or DNA. I'm preaching God right about here. That, that I don't care who's in parliament. They better be saved. They better be doing what God has called. And sometimes you got to know when to call the country to a solemn assembly. You, you got to know when to cry out and say, Priest, I need a word from God. I need to hear from it. I need the heavens to be open over the Bahamas. But, but we've reached a place where this text shows that a king that has been crowned king in Hermon, that David decides that he wants to return the presence of God to its rightful place. I feel all right. That, that, that he's saying the reason we've not been winning some battles is that we've left the presence of God in Isaiah's house. That the the reason we haven't experienced the glory of God is we believe that there's a special place where only the upper and ups can get the presence of God. But the king, when he got crowned, said the French order of business is we need to get the presence back. I stopped by to help you this morning that if the Bahamas is going to get reconnected, we need to get the power back. Take it for what it's worth that you can pretend as much as you want as if God is pleased with what's going on in this land. And I want to tell you there are many of us that have a form of godliness, but we lack the power thereof that we have brand new praises. We've got sophisticated systems, but we got no power. Let's not fool ourselves. And God has said, you have not because you... I watch it. I watch it. I watch it. David, David realized that there needed to be restoration. There needed to be a refreshing. And, and he realized that no matter how much he put on the ephod, no matter how much he Call for the dancers and the praise team. That, that something was disconnected. Something was missing from his life and from the call of God. And so he had a sense that his country, although they were the people of God, was disconnected. Although they claimed this is where God lives, they were disconnected. I'm almost done with part A. I'll finish part B next week. Uh, but you see, you can kind of understand why he realized it was necessary to be connected. And I tell you that you might have a beautiful chandelier in your house. That it might even be fake or real crystals. It could have all the fine trimmings. And when people walk in your house. They see the splendor and the grandeur of your pocket. They could sense that you've gone to great lengths to have an immaculate entry to your house. But let me tell you, no matter how much you spend looking good, no matter how much is put into the fixture, if you don't have electricity running to the house, you are holding something that has no power. I want to suggest to you that I had a technician in town this week. He, he was from America and I was driving him around to do an audit on sound for our convention. And, and, and he touched me and he said, do you mind if I say something to you? I said, go ahead. He said, my God, I've never seen so many churches. Say every corner we go to, there's a church. Every building, I've never seen so many churches. Everywhere I look, there's a church. There's a church over there. There's a church over here. And I wish I could tell him that that's because God's power is in this. Now, I, I wish I could tell him that that's just a sign of how God is moving in this land. But we got plenty buildings, but we got no power. We, we got plenty fixtures, but we lack the power. There are, and before you get upset and blame the preacher, you got to also blame the light bulbs. That we got too many light bulbs that ain't shining. We got too many people. 
people in the pew that ain't worshiping God. We got too many people ain't hooked up to nothing. If they get tired of this chandelier, they go over to that chandelier. And God is saying, I've been trying to get the body of Christ on one of God. I've been trying to turn on the power. But you see, I come to new destiny and I can't get all the light bulbs to turn on at the same time. But I've got good news that he said if two or three, he said, I don't need everybody to be conductable. I don't need everybody to be on a linear grid. I don't need everybody to be connected in other acts of engineers. I don't need everybody to be in the same row. I just need them to connect conductivity. And we'll jump over some people. And the power that God wants to release in church will skip a row. That <laughs> the power God wants to release in church will skip some people who don't want to be turned on. Who don't want to be electrified. Who don't want the presence of God. But God has said it's time to be reconnected. Notice something that, that that some people got some nice TVs. You know, I I'm changing out some of our TVs because they tell me I have to change. That's something I don't want to touch that now. They tell me they were moving from analog to digital. That's what they tell me. So you gotta get rid of all them old TVs. They tell you that too. Okay. I thought they only told me that. And, and they told me that this old boxer wouldn't be able to send the digital signal that is necessary for the transitional merger that within a year's time, them old TVs would be no good. But just the other day, I was in my house and one of the digital box Stop working. It worked when it feels like work. Sometimes it click in. Sometimes it eye too bright, but I can tell it just a resistor that needs to change. And I take it back to them. They say they don't fix it. They change it. I, I, and if I rent it, they'll change it for free. But if I bought it, I gotta buy a new one. And so I said, let me get a new one. Come by the house. They said they must come to the house and install. Well, by God. <laughs> but when they showed up to the house, he took up an old square box and started to add it up. I said, what you doing? He said, this is the new box. I said, no, 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 no. You told me those box wasn't gonna work no more. So I had to buy this new box. And he said, I don't know who tell you that, but this box the work when I hook it up. But I realized there's some people buying brand new TVs, changing an analog system, and moving to advanced programming, but they ain't got no cable service because they've been disconnected for no payment. Let me say this to you. You can't get you don't pay for it. And the problem with the Bahamas and the church, we too busy wanting things for free. You can't get no hookup. You can't run no truck car. You can't borrow nobody's power. You need your own connection. So we got plenty of stuff. We got plenty of people look good on the outside. But no power on the inside. I've almost done, you know, I love this computer stuff and, and sometimes I could buy the most sophisticated computer with the most modern router, most powerful modem with large capacity in the gigabytes and, and, and at the level where I, they tell me I would never use up all my memory. Just the other day I found out that I could get a cloud system, Dr. Ford, that, that I could, you can see some of you looking like, what are you talking about? Did I, that you could get a roller that produces a cloud in your environment and you could put things in the cloud, in the sky, in the space, in your house. 
Some of the tech people understand what I'm talking about. And, and you can have many, many megabytes and gigabytes of storage capacity. They tell me that you would never run out of space in your own house. And you can, you can have many reservoirs and you can have fast round and fast computing speed, but have no data plan.